Hey, welcome back everybody. And I'm coming at you from the workroom again for another walkthrough. And um, as you can see, hopefully this will fix the overexposure errors of, uh, of the last video that I did with the Genesis controller. I've got a nice mat here that's uh, got a matte finish rather than the steel table finish, so it's not gonna reflect back into the camera and make it one big splotchy looking mess. But anyhow, you can see I've got a, a, a Nintendo GameCube controller here. This is the controller that I picked up at that GameCube at the um, DI uh, recently. And I don't know if you can see this well in the video, but it's got some problems. Um, first off, it's really dirty. Uh, second off, uh, thumbsticks has got, got a little bit of chewage here. Looks like a dog is, has gotten to it, as well as the cord. I mean, it's obviously got a electrical tape repair here that uh, previous person did that's kind of half-assed and one that they didn't repair that's right there. But um, uh, see if I can get some heat shrink on this. If not, I'll be using electrical tape, but doing it right, because this is not how that's to be done. But, and, and we'll get this thumbstick replaced and we're gonna clean this up. So let's uh, get to it. Um, to start off, you're gonna have to obviously take the controller apart. Now there are six uh, screws that hold uh, GameCube controllers together. And like most modern Nintendo stuff, there are tri-wing screws, so you will, will need <coughs> a tri-wing screwdriver. And you can find them on eBay for a few bucks. Uh, various, uh, um, you know, video game repair related sites. Um, and I'll post up some links to those. But there's also um, one from Saiba, which I just recently got, and I love this thing already. Um, but uh, it cost me about uh, $18, and it's a kit. Um, has a ton of different security bits and whatnot. It's ratcheting. Very nice. And I'll post up a link to that as well if you're interested. And, and I'll probably go into it in a little more detail in another video. But uh, anyhow, let's get on with taking this thing apart. And to start off, you've got six screws, like I said. Two up top, two in the uh, thumbsticks, and two at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those screws, and, uh, and I'll get this controller taken apart. We'll be right back. All right, so the screws are out. Now we just need to lift the back off. Pretty easy, there's not much to it. Um, all the back has in there just the two shoulder buttons there. And I'm just gonna set that aside for now. Now, as we can see in here, we've got our PCB with uh, got our shoulder buttons there. That's interesting. I've never taken one of these apart before, but looks like the shoulder buttons work on a uh, the slider here that's, that's kind of interesting but anyway we'll go ahead and remove this PCB just by pulling that off of that screw post there and it should just lift right out just set that to the side and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and clean these up as well these little rubbers the contact patches and as I've shown you before in many other videos um, these buttons and D-pads, they, they only go in one way. So go ahead and just dump them out. And then you've got your Z button here, which is got a little spring-loaded thing there. So you don't need to worry too much about that. It just drops right in. So now you're ready to uh, set that to the side. Now, I'm not seeing, okay. Looks like to remove these, you just push up and pull down. And get that out, push up, and then lift out, and the buttons should come right out, looks like. Yep, so just set those to the side. And now the top and the bottom are ready to uh, be cleaned. And I've shown you in other videos how I do that, so I'm not really going to go into much detail and show that on video, but. Uh, Let's go ahead and move this cord out of the way. But what I am going to show you is now you know that dirt likes to hide in between these two pieces in these cracks. And what I typically will do is I will use a toothbrush with some Windex and I scrub at these and then I'll toss them under the under the sink to rinse them off. Now sometimes you might need to use a, uh, a Q-tip might work a little better because sometimes the toothbrush really doesn't get at some of the stuff that's really really caked on, but sometimes I even go as far as to use this. And it's just a toothpick. And so you just get the toothpick in there and just 
really go at it and get that stuff off. Then I take the toothbrush to it to clean up and then I'll rinse it off in the sink. But uh, I will go ahead and do that and then I will be right back. All right, I am back again. And here we have the PCB for the, uh, for the controller here. And as you can see, we've got our thumbsticks on here, our, our C thumbstick and our regular one. Now, what do we do about this? There's, there, the C is fine, it really doesn't need to be replaced, just cleaned up, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pull that off and do that. And they just lift right off, don't, don't be worried. They do give a little bit of resistance, but they will just pull right off. Now, this one does need to be replaced, it looks like crap. Um, but what do we replace it with? Well, there's a couple of options. Um, first option is to find another GameCube controller that's just toast and cannibalize it for parts and hopefully find some of those. Uh, you can find them on eBay. People are selling them, Chinese reproductions that I've heard mixed uh, uh, reviews about some of them. Um, because as you know, these, these controllers are going up in price because of games like Super Smash Brothers for the Wii and I believe that they're gonna go up even more when we have the new uh, Smash Brothers come out for the Wii U. And be, these are just gonna become more and more desirable. And uh, that community, um, it really, I mean, there's like a whole modding community behind these controllers and everything. And some of them have complained about the top part wearing down while playing Super Smash Brothers. And I mean, I, those guys really put these things to heavy use. So, I mean, I guess if you aren't playing Super Smash Brothers, that's not an issue. Just do a search on eBay, you'll find them for like GameCube thumbsticks or GameCube joystick or whatever. You'll also probably find these, which are the actual joystick itself, which is the same that's used on uh, nunchucks and whatnot. So these two are the same, but um, I got mine from a vendor online that um, actually comes, uh, they're, they're kind of expensive. They're about two bucks, 230 piece for, for um, one of the thumbsticks as well as a C stick. But I've heard very good things about these. I will post a link down below to the website to go get these, but I only need the thumbstick, so I'm just going to replace just the thumbstick. But before I do that, I am gonna clean up under here because if, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there is a lot of gunk built up under there. And uh, that's probably to be expected considering they use these go through and stuff just gets jammed up underneath there. So I'm just gonna wet the end of a Q-tip with some Windex here. And then I'm just gonna go around this and clean that off. Just like hair and gunk like that. But yeah, just be sure to clean this kind of stuff off because it's, well, it's gross, but um, yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue to clean this. And what you're gonna to wanna to also do is after cleaning it with Windex, because Windex will leave a residue, and you really don't want that on here. I mean, look at that, that's pretty gross. Follow it up with some 99% isopropyl alcohol, which does not leave a residue and will clean any of, of what's left over from the Windex off. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and uh, clean up the rest of this board as well as clean under this one because it looks like it's got a little gunk too. And uh, I will be right back. All right, so I'm back and I've cleaned up the PCB and everything looks good. Now, as you can see, I've also removed that electric, uh, electrician's tape from the cord here. And yeah, it's, it's pretty bad um, tear there. But um, so I've been trying to figure out the best way to go about this because it seems that uh, the only way that I can to get the heat shrink on, I would have to cut this uh, this uh, cable tie here, which is fine. But in order to get the the, the sh heat shrink over the tube, I would have to remove this connector. Which um, usually um, I've, I've removed cables from these types of connectors before. There's little tabs here, and on the uh, actual pin that slides in, there's protrusions that will come up against that pin to keep the cable from coming out of this connector. Now usually you can use something to pry underneath there and pull it out and I've been having trouble getting that to happen and I just don't want to force it. It's just not worth it to destroy the cable. Um, the next option would be to desolder this, pull it out, um, put the heat shrink on and resolder it back in which is 
just a, more work than I'm looking to put into this thing. So um, if you want to go ahead and do that on a controller that you're dealing with like this, that's really your options, um, just to let you know. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to opt for some more electrician state. But this time it's not just going to be a wadded up mess, I'm going to actually put it on there nice and tight. Um, try to emulate using heat shrink as much as I can. And you don't want to use too much electrician's tape. Um, it's just, it just bulks up like that and it's, it's of no use to anyone that way. But I'm just going to get some here, just a short strip, cut it off. And then I'll show you on this small one here what, I'm, what I do is you just get the cord straight and just get the tape started so that it has something to grip onto. Now you pull the tape nice and tight and wrap it around. Now I'm not even gonna use all this because it's, it's more than I need, but yeah, you just get it nice and tight and pull it around. Cut off your excess. I mean, that's pretty decent repair for, uh, for using electrician tape. Like I said, I would prefer to use heat shrink, but in this case, it's just not worth the time. But I'm gonna go ahead and fix this one up, and I will be right back with the next part. All right, so I am back, and uh, this is all ready to go back together. But before we do, we still got some more stuff to work out. Um, now, we've got all this stuff here. Oops, lost our spring. Um, all the buttons and everything. And I've shown you what I do with these guys. Um, basically, what I'm gonna do is for the contact patches, I'm just gonna get some Windex on these and then scrub them with a, uh, with a toothbrush, uh, dry them up with some paper towel and then blow them out with uh, some compressed air to get all the crap out of those. Um, next up, the buttons. Uh, I'll just scrub them with a toothbrush as well. Do the same. And uh, yeah, these I'm not really gonna, <laughs> they're not really dirty. I mean, they've got contact patches on the bottom. It looks like the, uh, they write on these sliders, but there's a, there, as you can see, there's a contact there for it to actually register when something is pushed. So this is for the analog usage and then uh, it's a very interesting uh, system they got there but uh, anyhow um, also I wanted to quickly talk to you about these are all cleaned up and ready to go but um, one thing I also do is on these screw holes I will get some Windex on some q-tips and I will actually clean those out um, I'll get q-tips and get inside the buttons to clean those out but uh, as you can see they cleaned up very nicely um, it. Besides some a uh, few minor scuffs on them, on this, it, it actually looks pretty good. But we'll we'll see when we get it back together. I'm going to go ahead and clean up these buttons and these contact patches, and um, I will be right back. All right, I am back, and everything is all cleaned up and ready to be reassembled here. Um, let's go ahead and start off with uh, putting our thumbsticks back on here. So on the bottom of these, there's a little notch. And so these can only go on one way. Obviously, the, it's pretty easy to tell which way it's supposed to go with the C here. Let's just get that lined up and push it on. Same with the thumbstick here, the new thumbstick. Um, and the notch is towards the top on both of them. So we got those on and now we can go ahead. Let's move this out of the way and get all of our buttons put back in. Now, um, with the D-pad here, just go ahead and drop it in. And then we've got, which one is this? This is our X button and Looks like it drops in here. 
goes obviously our Y here. A goes there. Z obviously back here. Just remember to push down your little uh, spring there. And we have our B button. And then start. And then all we need to do is put our rubbers back in here. So let's see. I'm trying to see how these are. There we go. You can tell by that little hole there that goes on this post to line it up. And the D-pad. Then the start button. All right. So now let's just set that out of the way. Get the back and go ahead and stick our buttons back in, remembering which one was right. They say R and L on them, and then which one was left. And then we just take our little spring loaded things here, just push them up and put it into place there. This one's not being as cooperative. There we go. Alright, so now let's go ahead and get this back over here. And we just drop PCB back in. I'm gonna move this cord out of the way. And make sure you get the uh, C thumbstick back in its spot there. Now we gotta make sure to put this cord back around that screw post and then out. Now Make sure these are both all the way up to the top so that they can rest inside these two holes here for the uh, shoulder buttons. And then just turn it over, press together. Now we are ready to reassemble by putting our screws back in. Really helps to magnetize your tips, by the way. You can do that with a magnet, but or you can use one of these. I highly suggest getting one of these if you're working on anything with screws to magnetize your screwdrivers, because otherwise this would be much more of a pain in the ass than it needs to be. Last one. All right, there we go. It's back together and I mean, how well that shows up on camera, but I mean, it just, it looks worlds better than it did before. I mean, I. The worst I can complain about on here is some scuffs and scratches, but it's clean. Um, it's got a nice thumbstick now. Everything seems to be nice and good. The only thing that I wish I could have done was put some heat shrink on these, on this cord here. But uh, you know, for for a 
$12 GameCube that came with this controller. I just really can't complain too much, especially now that it's nice and cleaned up. But, uh, you know, if you've got any questions, comment down below and ask them. I'll be happy to answer. Um, I will put links in the description for, uh, for the, the different things that I use, the uh, different uh, the screwdriver. I will, I will have some links to get those down in the description, as well as to get these thumbsticks. Um, so you can uh, replace your gnarled up ones. But uh, yeah, got any questions or comments, leave them down below. Um, if this is helpful, go ahead and like the video. If it was not, well, sorry. <laughs> I do my best, but um, yeah, that's it for this video. Hope it was helpful for you guys, and I will uh, be posting another video soon. So thanks for tuning in.